I had been a, a fan of opera since the age of about eight or nine listening to it on the radio. The junior high school uh, orchestra director, she would lend me LPs to listen to, Don Giovanni. I remember she uh, lent me a recording of Der Freischutz that I just sort of played over and over again. And, and not only was I probably the only sort of teenager in Philadelphia who, who knew Der, Der Freischutz at all and knew it extensively just by listening to it, I was probably the only person. <laughs> because it hadn't been done in a long time. And there came a time where I had to make a decision. I was still thinking about maybe still becoming a professional oboe player, but I started to look at the practical implications of it. And, and oddly enough, I saw, <laughs> I saw more career potential in being an opera singer than, than being an oboe player. People they come and they're gripped and they're completely taken by this wonderful adventure that's going on in this room with upwards of three, 4,000 people sometimes, all there for the same reason. And, and this pure, unfiltered, unamplified Part of the human spirit is coming out through them via sound. The times when you're up there, after having done due diligence in your practice room, and then you get up there and you inhabit this character, and where, where it's not work at all. You're not even thinking of it as a job. You're not even thinking of it as yourself. Those moments are just sheer magic. And if you're getting into this, to be famous or anything of the sort, don't. Because ultimately, if that comes, it's gotta be a byproduct of you just doing something because you love it.